My name is Henry Whedon, and today I'll be talking about an inter interpersonal relationship I experienced. When I was in 10th grade, I decided to join my high school basketball team. I had recently shaken off the label of being a nerd, and I went to slowly move on into the job category. I thought things would be simple. Show up to practice, hang out with the, the team, and gain respect from my peers. Peers of the opposite gender in particular. Due to my laziness, my fantasy was destroyed by reality. I had not accounted for all the hard work it would take to be good at basketball. During one sweaty day running laps through the field, I saw something strange. We had a new student who came to school two weeks late. His presence was a big deal because of his older sister and was in the previous year's graduating class. We will call him Sam to protect his privacy. Due to how he dressed, I assumed he would play soccer, but there he was, ready to play basketball. My coach was familiar with my slower running speeds and led him to avoid my negative influence, but he struck, struck up a conversation anyways. There are many forecasted rewards and costs for becoming friends with Sam. Friendship also provides social capital to benefit you, a queer, excuse me, because of who you know. That's from the textbook, page 365. At the time, he was a sophomore at school due to his older sister's reputation. So I knew preventing him would be increase my own popularity. But this also came with a potential risk. A lot of the times, new students would come that came would be popular at first due to the small size of our school. But in a couple of weeks, people would get tired of them, which either led to them blending in or the worst case scenario, they would be excluded and antagonized. Another perceived disadvantage was that I already had a best friend and we already did not have any classes together. So I, I did not want him to get hurt, on a, on a hurt by seeing us hang out. As for predicting the cost, I was not completely accurate. People did get worn out by his eccentric personality, but he understood me in a way many of my other friends could not. At one point, I tried distancing myself from him a little bit, due to his reputation. But then I felt horribly, horrible, and he eventually became my best friend for the remaining years of high school. Once Sam became an upperclassman, he gained popularity, until he was more well-liked than I was. I suffered a little bit, but ended up benefiting in the end. As far as my best friend was concerned, he was fine with it, and we actually became a trio for a while. But unfortunately, my older, my older friend switched schools mid-semester. I still wonder about the things we could have done if my friend had stayed. The textbook defines predictive outcome value theory as people predict the value of a friendship of a relationship based on initial self-assessment and, and rewards of the relationship to the potential costs and rewards of the relationship. In order to decide whether I should be friends with Sam or not, I had to examine how much the benefits would help me and how much the costs would hurt me. As far as costs go, the only major one was the potential loss of popularity I had mentioned earlier. Since my basketball dreams were down the drain, I had pretty much given up on a great spike in popularity. Even if Sam became the most popular kid in school and the effect would have on me um, the effect would have on me seemed minimal either way. By examining the cost, I didn't have much to lose. I may not have gained a lot of material benefits from this, but as I mentioned earlier, Sam understood me like no one else in school did. We liked similar jokes, listened to some of the same artists, and had the same enemies. I could walk over to him at any random time of the day and just talk and laugh without really having to try, which I saw was a major benefit. I realized on the track, when we were first choked around that I wanted this guy to be my best friend because of how easily we connected. I still have not felt that with anyone else till this, this day. This sounds great so far, doesn't it? Unfortunately, it was not always smooth sailing. Sam is in the grade below me. Below, uh, so when I graduated high school last year, 2017, he was still there. The textbook says, dialectal tension is tension arising from a person's need for two things at the same time, on page 226. Since I stayed home instead of going off for college to save money, I wanted to avoid one major problem, giving off the appearance that I had peaked in high school. There was always that one graduate that would always come back after they were graduated, and I dreaded the idea of that being me. When I first went to college, I vowed not to come back to my high school until the official alumni event during winter break. I know Sam missed me and wanted me to come visit, but I couldn't. I really wanted to, but I knew that I wouldn't, it wouldn't be good for for my own moving on or my reputation. 
wanted to maintain the same friendship we had, but they also had to limit our contact at the same time. I never really addressed the issue, but after this I decided the cost outweighed the benefits during the winter and I visited him whenever I wanted to. We never discussed it, but I am glad I didn't continue to distance myself to two opinions I shouldn't even care about. I recently went to Sam's graduation and he is now also going to a local school. So hopefully our friendship will continue to flourish for many more years. For citations, I decided the textbook, uh, interpersonal communication related to the others by B. Sorry, thank you.